Alright, bom dia mi amigos. Good morning my friends. I got a video here I want to go over and I'm gonna try to limit it to about nine minutes but I want to share with you the ideas that these guys present and I want to show you how they've got it wrong you know show you that it's wrong and then show you what is right so let's look get into this hello and welcome to according to John today we have a really good question slash topic who, who raised this question <laughs> I walked in here this morning and said, Johnny, I got a podcast I want to do. It's, it's your baby. You can do the homework, and I'll take all the credit for right. it. <laughs> Wait a minute, but that seems to be standard. <laughs> it is. He does the work, and, you know, I'm an old guy. You're stuck with me, John, for eternity. <laughs> yeah, I'll take it. The millennial oh, kingdom. So Remember Jesus said in the model prayer, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. The kingdom. People pray this yeah. a thousand yeah. million times a day. And they just, they don't have a clue what it's all about. The kingdom is probably going to be one of the most exciting times. Uh, I'd say it's going to be third in most exciting times with Christ. One, will, the most exciting, I think, will be the rapture. Yep, I'm, I'm ready for that one. Yeah. The, the second will be heaven itself and our final Bowing destination. and singing, thou art worthy yeah. to receive wisdom and honor and glory both now and forever. Amen. Yeah. That's number two. And then the third, I think, is the millennial kingdom. And the the rapture in a moment of twi twinkle of an eye, a moment of time is done. Ooh, there we are. And then around the throne, that's going to be, that's not going to be a moment. That's going to be a while. Right. You know, a, 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 an afternoon, an evening, a day, a well, week, a month. I don't know. Okay, so here's here's what I think, and, and this what? is just me thinking out loud, which I get sometimes is, <laughs> okay. you know, he does that. <laughs> so I think that we have the rapture, and since I'm pre-trib, that's the beginning of the tribulation, and so then you have the seven. Okay, all right, so. You caught that, right? See, he's saying the rapture is before the tribulation. The trib, that's the beginning of the tri tribulation. Rapture. It says on pre trib, that's the beginning of the tribulation. All right, so let's examine that real quickly. I mean, this should take just a second here. In Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. Jesus says that there will be tribulation. Let's see. For there shall be great tribulation. And then immediately after the tribulation, Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, and it is the end of the world. You know, don't forget, Jesus is asked specifically, what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And the end of the world comes immediately after the tribulation. And also we read in John 16, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So that's obviously wrong, what he's talking about here. <laughs> we have the rapture. It says on pre-trib, that's the beginning of the tribulation. And so then you have the seven-year tribulation, which is three and a half years of peace, three and a half. Right, so I can't help you with the seven-year tribulation because it's not in the Bible anywhere. And anytime anybody mentions the seven year tribulation I know what they're talking about they're talking about Daniel 9 where it says in the midst of a week right here verse 27 in the midst of the week he sh shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease Jesus already done that when he laid down his life as the perfect sacrifice this is already fulfilled all right so it's just odd 
the only way that they think that they justify this teaching is if they claim the Messiah is not the Messiah but this is talking about the Prince and that the Prince which is what they say is the Antichrist he's the one that takes he causes sacrifice and oblation to cease it's just odd all right because clearly Jesus fulfilled this he put an end of sins it was him that made reconciliation for iniquity and he's the one that causes sacrifice and oblation to cease it, the Antichrist doesn't <laughs> I mean come on in half years of crazy in heaven at the same time you're gonna have the judgment seat of Christ and the marriage supper of the Lamb screaming amen so that's that's a sweet here over that. No, that the judgment seat of Christ and the marriage supper of the Lamb uh, combined is a seven-year time frame. Now, all right, so that's not in the Bible at all. Not at all. Christ and the marriage supper of the Lamb uh, combined is a seven-year time frame. Now, we don't know how long the judgment seat is going to last, and we don't know how long the the supper is going to last. Yeah, we're not told, but we do know that. It all right, so the judgment seat, which if yeah, that's uh, you know that uh, I'm not going to dispute the term, but what he's talking about is the judgment of God. All right, in the marriage supper, which is a part of the judgment of God. It's not complicated, man. It's not complicated at all. These guys are making every single term out to be a separate event because they lack understanding and. They lack faith, and I'll show you. That it's a seven-year time frame because it's during the same time as the tribulation. Yes, we're on the same page, Johnny. Yeah, that ought to scare you. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the coolest part. So after after the seven years, and then it's the return of Christ. That's actually the second coming is Armageddon. All right, so I don't know if you notice he he's got Jesus returning, and then he's got Jesus returning. He's got two returns of the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I wonder if these guys even think about what they're saying. Correct. Some people get the second coming and the rapture reversed. He come. All right. Some people get the second coming and the rapture reversed so Jesus is asked what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world and when he appears in the clouds of heaven it is the end of the world and this is when we are what they describe as being raptured they, the angels of God shall gather together his elect that's the rapture it's the end of the world so this isn't making no sense at all. That's actually the second coming is Armageddon. Correct. Some people get the second coming and the rapture reversed. All right. So like Jesus got it wrong? So, I mean, this, this is what Jesus said. Immediately after the tribulation... He appears in the clouds of heaven, and the angels gather together his elect. And that, that comes from Jesus, he, so he got it wrong. He comes at the rapture for his church, he comes with the church at the second coming of yeah. seven years. What? So. He comes and we are gathered together, he gathers his elect, and then he goes away for seven years. 
at the rapture for his church. He comes with the church at the second coming yeah. seven years later to set up his... Seven years later. So, for seven years, we're up in the air. And uh, I, I, that contradicts what they said earlier. For seven years, they're, we're up in the air. And these guys are down below. And, uh, and, and the, how does Jesus come again if he's already came and gathered us to himself? You, you understand the question I have? I, I don't want, it doesn't make any sense. He's come in the clouds of heaven. That, but that's not him coming? <laughs> I, it doesn't make any sense to me at all. Jesus gives a parable of the wheat and the tares. The harvest is the end of the world. And the wheat are gathered up into his barn. All right, let's do this here. The wheat are gathered into my barn. That's parallel with what we're reading here. And the angels gather together his elect and the tares which are the unsaved are bound in bundles and burned this is the end of the world right the harvest is the end of the world the wheat is gathered the tares are burned this exactly parallels what we read in Matthew 24 when Jesus is asked what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world so what are these guys talking about? His what? His kingdom. Oh, we're going to talk yeah, about that. Because his, well, here's the thing. The, the reason that the rapture is not the second coming is because we go to him in the clouds. He, he never touches earth. So he doesn't come? Fellas, this ain't making any sense. So he comes in the clouds that's not his second coming because he didn't touch the earth uh, <laughs> I can't help you with this stuff man I cannot help you with this stuff you think about John 14 Jesus says let not your heart be troubled you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, you know, and the way, you know. All right. So he is ascended to heaven he's prepared a place for us and when he comes back he will gather us to himself I don't know what these guys are talking about earth again until Armageddon until his feet touch the Mount of Olives yeah um, on the, uh, the mountain cleaves in two and he's crowned yeah. king of kings and lord of lords sits on <laughs> sits on the throne in Jerusalem sets up his kingdom and the Bible does tell us how long that's going to be all right so I, I know what you're talking about here so when they speak about Jesus touching his feet back on the earth well, of course after we're lifted up we're when we're lifted up we're transformed into our glorified bodies and then all wickedness is destroyed at our feet and then we're set back down on the earth that's when the new city the holy city the new Jerusalem comes down out of heaven onto the earth a new heaven a new earth okay uh, this is one example right here Galatians 4 verse 26 Jerusalem which is above is free which is the mother of us all think about what I just read in John 14 he's going to prepare a place for us this is Jerusalem this is the holy city the city of God that Jesus is preparing for us 
It's not in the it's not some piece of land in the Middle East. All right. Yes, and that is what we're going to talk about. Yes, but you didn't even introduce... How do these people know who we are? Hey, I am your host, John Westfall. This is my co-host, Pastor Duke Herget, the Duke Meister. And today's question uh, presented to us by Duke himself. <laughs> he pulled this together in 30 minutes, but he had cheated and done some back work. I did. I had... So what's interesting is, is I had this on on the back burner so when you came in and said hey let's do this on the uh, uh, the millennial kingdom uh, he goes you can put that together in 30 minutes well little did he know is so i'm doing a, my podcast <laughs> uh, on video and while i'm doing that he he puts this all together so we're ready we're fresh this is man this is just <clears throat> off the press this is right <laughs> but he did some of the work backstage and he snookered me I mean, he pulled that word out of our whole ohio uh pool Ooh, room yes. vocabulary he snookered me a little bit oh, made me think he did it all just now but we are we are uh, armed and loaded and ready to bless you out and i think i think is i think during the millennial reign the world is going to be like it is today as far as <laughs> electricity. Wow. And it's going to be just like it is today. Yeah, because it is today. I, I don't think... Motorcycles, we yeah, talked about that. That's Ooh. what I'm getting at. I know. <laughs> Motorcycles <laughs> and sex. Ha <laughs> ha. And I don't think that Jesus no. is going to take us back. I mean, uh, seriously. You think it's going to be just like today? People having sex and committing sin? during this thousand year period if not then all you have is a thousand years of no sin and then you got big troubles all right because you got a huge problem at the end of the thousand years you got a huge problem if there is no sin during the thousand years then you've got a huge problem. If you have sin during the thousand years and you're placing the thousand years after we are transformed into our glorified bodies, you got a huge problem. Okay, because you have unsaved people living with people in their glorified bodies. Alright, and that doesn't work either. Because all you're going to do is have a bunch of perverts still wanting to have sex with you. That's not paradise. And it goes back to when, God? When are you going to put an end to all this? The whole reason why we have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ is because we want to be delivered out of this wicked world. Just like Moses led his people out of the wickedness of Egypt God is going to deliver us out of the wickedness of this world but not according to these guys now, I don't know what these guys are teaching but I it, to me just as an overview it looks to me like these guys are getting their doctrine from a Hollywood movie called Left Behind back to the Stone Age, Stone Age, yeah. if you will. I, I just, I don't know. I don't know why he would. Yeah. Johnny's going to be watching me growing sweet potatoes yeah. on on his iPhone. As I, as I don't have get, an iPhone. He gets off of his motorcycle. <laughs> no, I'm going to go buy you on the motorcycle, blowing the horn, <laughs> with my hair <laughs> waving in the back. <laughs> yeah. He already does the the the, the drive by, he did the hair thing. That's going to have to be in the king. That's, that's the key. Yeah, that's you're getting ahead of yourself, John. Uh, all right, here it's me that gets ahead. It's you. <laughs> you need me, man. <laughs> I'm so excited for the millennial kingdom because I can go into twisties at a ridiculous speed and I can't die again. So, <laughs> all right, so what's, what happens at the end of the thousand years? You see what I'm saying? You got a problem. You've got a problem because Satan is going to be loosed and he's going to gather his people and they're going to compass the camp of the saints about. You got a problem right there. Okay. 
I'll explain that in a little bit. <laughs> His kingdom is coming. And, and I can see Jesus say, Johnny, no motorcycle for the first six months. <laughs> Why did you take so much pleasure in that? I don't know, man. I, don't know, I just want to bust on you a little bit. Okay, well, Remember listen. What you sow, dude. You go. <laughs> You open us up in a word of we prayer. Made it. Let's pray. Uh, Father, you have out in your feet. I pray upon me. All right. What is the millennial kingdom? And, uh, of course, that's a title that is given because you're not going to find millennial kingdom in the Bible. Like, that term is not in there. It comes from the word uh, millennium comes from two uh, Greek words, milli, which means thousand, milli, like a millimeter, and annum, which means year, milli, annum, thousand year reign of Christ. How about that? How about that, huh? That right there? Bingo. Don't believe in the Bible. Uh, why are they, uh, why do they go into this Latin? Uh, well, isn't that, that should be a clue, shouldn't it? Um, how do you spell millennium? Millennial. Alright, we could just do it this way. Oh, well, that's not there. Let's go this way. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's not it. That's not millennium. That's not millennial, millennium, millennia, nothing. All right, so they don't believe what the Bible says. To me, that's what it says, what what he's saying. He doesn't believe the Word of God. Um, he, he's, <laughs> he's breaking down a word that's not even in the Bible. And then he's applying it to reign of Christ, thousand year reign of Christ, which is not in the Bible either. So he's not getting this doctrine from the Bible. He's getting it from men. Why? Because he does not trust the word of God. He trusts the words of men. We notice here in verses four and verses six, it talks about we, those of us that are saved living and reigning with Christ a thousand years and they shall reign with him a thousand years it doesn't say Jesus reigns a thousand years if it did it would that would nullify the entire Bible about that for some technical thing for an old hippie Dude. I think I get a point for that Johnny <laughs> you won't get them I'll take them no, we're, right. we're pretty look, happy today. Look, right, okay, you got a point right there. Thank you. All right, Thank you. but I got I got a point for putting it together. Two. All right, two points. Two All right, points. I'll take the two. Yeah. So it's literally, it's a thousand year reign of Jesus Christ on Earth. That is the millennial. All right. So uh, let me just show you. I guess since maybe somebody new is watching this doesn't know nothing. In Luke chapter one, verse thirty-three talking about Jesus he shall reign over the house of Jacob which is Israel forever and of his kingdom there shall be no end unless you listen to these guys and his kingdom ends in a thousand years and then the kingdom is because it's Christ's kingdom on earth. That's where he is the king of kings on earth. You know, when I back off and I see this and it's coming to a God, it's like already here, past, present, future. They kind of get blended with God. And, you know, when I look at the millennial kingdom, we're going to show you a bunch of verses. John Scott lined up for you yeah. from, the, uh, from what really absolutely is for sure. I'm not going to go through all these verses that they share because I already know them. And not one single verse. Are they going to... I Look, right here's the link. If you want to watch it for yourself, it's according to John Unbridled. It's recent, June 5th. All right. You can go look, and you're going to see all these verses from the Old Testament and um, maybe a couple from the New Testament. And not some, one single verse is going to talk about a thousand-year reign of Christ or a thousand year kingdom it's not in the Bible anywhere at all 
And what they do is they apply verses that pertain to everlasting life to this idea of a thousand years. And a thousand years is not the same as everlasting life. It's odd. It really is. Very, very, very odd. God says so. But you know, I, look, I paraphrase all that and say, it's the way it was supposed to be. Isn't that amazing? It's the way. It will be the way God always intended it to be. Can you? I was talking to Sherry the other day thinking, wow, can you imagine what the fruit trees are going to taste like? Here we go. About the, the, the one. fruit. I mean, oh my goodness. No chemicals, no spray, no bugs, no chemtrails, no... It's just going to be the way God intended it. There's one verse about the Millennial Kingdom that talks about a specific plant. I can't give you the verse now, but you can look it up. I'll the plant it of renown. You remember okay. that? The plant of renown. And that's all it says. And I'm thinking, holy cow, I think a peach is okay. renown. I think... I think Marijuana is renowned. Because, you know, a nectarine, a peach without fuzz. Okay. That's right. He's talking about peach. I don't know what he's talking about, really, honestly. He obviously does not no, but you can look understand. Up the plant of renown. You know, Anything. That? The plant of renown. He does not. I mean, this is about as much as I can take. Uh, seriously. So, the first mention of renown. Interesting. I, I'm. Just going off track just for a second. Genesis 6 4. Uh, talking about the sons of God came in onto the daughters of men, and giants were born unto them. And, uh, and there were giants in those days, and even after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, that they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of men. Somehow people don't even comprehend that, but that's another topic. <laughs> Men of renown. So let's go to this mention of the plant of renown. Alright, so we'll scroll down here just a little bit. Ezekiel 34 verse 29 and I will raise up for them a plant of renown, and they shall be no more consumed with hunger in the land, neither bear the shame of the heathen any more. Now, you, you read Ezekiel, you read, you can just read this chapter, uh, read the context of it, and, you know, whatever. Read the whole thing. There's no mention at all of a thousand year period. There's no mention of a thousand year kingdom at all. Alright, so let's go over this. Sorry, right, I will raise up for them a plant of renown. It's not a peach. It's not a fuzzy peach. John 15, I am the true vine, and my father is a husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit he takes away in every branch that bears fruit he purges it that it may bring forth more fruit now Jesus says I am the vine ye are the branches he that abides in me and I in him the same brings forth much fruit for without me ye can do nothing all right Jesus is that plant of renown all right Whosoever liveth and believeth me shall never die. Okay, so what's the verse I'm thinking of here? Shall never hunger. Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that comes to me shall never hunger. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. They shall be no more consumed with hunger in the land. Neither bear the shame of the heathen anymore this uh, to me how do you read that verse and think oh peaches mmm fuzzy fuzzy peaches I mean this is mind-boggling how they can you can take every single point that they claim in the Bible 
and see that it's wrong every single time. It's like they cannot get any truth at all. What is that verse in John? What is that? I can't. John 8, something about something. He was a miracle and not, abode not in the truth because there is no truth. And abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. Abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. To me, this is what, it, I mean, we're nine minutes in and there's absolutely no truth in anything that these guys are saying at all. And it seems to me like they watched a Hollywood movie and now they're talking about the doctrine of that movie and not the doctrine of the Bible. <laughs> Tell me what you think. I mean, this is, this is unbelievable. Everybody's got this wrong. Now, this, the thing is, this is the same thing that all these other people teach and believe. And you hear it over and over and over again. Even people that uh, I admire. You know, I admire some of these people. But they're getting their doctrine from a Hollywood movie. And they're not trusting the Bible that they hold in their hands. Because if they did, they would see there is no millennial reign of Christ anywhere and so let me do this in case uh, you're new I'm gonna go over Revelation 20 and explain it real quickly as, as quick as I know how try to make it as simple as possible Revelation 20 verse 1 is an angel coming down from heaven which means this is an angel coming to John showing him another vision All right, I like in my mind I think of it as a, a picture being painted all right, this is another image, just like what we read in Revelation 1, the very first verse where it says uh, that the whole purpose of the book of Revelation is to show unto his servants the things which must shortly come to pass. All right, so the angels are going to show John the things that must shortly come to pass. And so when an angel comes down from heaven, this is another example of another vision being shown to John of things that must shortly come to pass. Okay, so he laid hold of the dragon, that old circle, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Okay, so why does this happen? Well, before baby Jesus comes, all right, there is this one country, the country of Israel. Okay, I'm making this real simple. All right, I saw a young kid explain this just a couple of days ago. I got a video, I don't think I've shared it yet, but I will share it, uh, where this kid talks about it, and young man talks about it, and uh, he just, he makes it real simple, he just says there was Israel, right, and uh, so there's just one country, outside of that country are all these other countries, all these other nations that are deceived by Satan, and there's one country that is the nation of God. All right, so now here comes Jesus, and he makes the kingdom of God available to whosoever believes in him. Now, uh, and Jesus says, he even says that the nation of God shall be, or the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. All right, and so... Um, let me give you another example here to support that. I don't want there to be any doubt because if you miss this, man, you might miss the whole thing. So in Exodus 19, you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. All right. And these are the words that thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. In 1 Peter chapter 2, ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation. Talking about those of us that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God. Why? We are a holy nation unto God right now. So therefore, Satan is bound because there is no one singular country 
of God's people, the kingdom of God is available to whosoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ. All right. Now, and he was ca he's cast into the bottomless pit, shut up, and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more, until the thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that he must be loosed a little season. All right. So this is a very unique time period that we're living in right now. All right. Very unique because. Uh, not only is the kingdom of God available to whosoever believes, um, the word, you know, but we are born of the Spirit of God, and this world is coming to an end. All right, so this is different than what it was like before Jesus, before baby Jesus. All right, before his death and resurrection and ascension to heaven. All right, before all that, this is different today now and then it's also different than what's it it's going to be like after his return it's a unique time period okay and let's see here till the thousand years should be fulfilled and after that he must be loosed a little season and it's going to explain what happens when he's loosed for a little season and i saw thrones all right now we can go back to uh Revelation 1 all right and it says here that he has made us kings and priests unto God we are kings if we're kings oops if we are king then we have thrones all right heavenly thrones right now right now we are a kingdom of priests right now we are a royal priesthood right now we are kings and priests unto God right now and I saw thrones and they sat upon them and judgment was given unto them so the judgment that we have eternal life has already been made for us that are born of the Spirit of God right now that's it the judgment has already been made we are saved sealed secure sanctified forever the judgment has already been given to us all right so uh so at the end of the world when when the judgment of god comes if you're not saved then you're punished and that's the wrath of god and you will die the second death okay and i saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of jesus and for the word of god all right, so we get one example of that, but this is something that's happened, and uh, we might expect it to continue to happen until the end of the world, all right? And if you do not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, then uh, my words, all right, what I'm going to tell you is that by default, you worship the beast, which is the king in his kingdom. So you're putting your, which is the world. So you're putting your hope into, uh, you know, what Dan Rather says, what Peter Jennings says, uh, you know, into the the Republicans or the Democrats. You're putting your trust into politicians. You're putting your trust into uh, perhaps NASA, and you're putting your trust into scientists and experts and scholars, and you're putting your trust in UFO aliens and all that sort of stuff. Anywhere and everywhere, but in the Word of God if you do not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ okay so by default you're worshiping all these things all right in your in your thoughts and in your deeds all right and everything that you do you you do it for the world or you do it for God all right and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years again I pointed this out earlier right now we live and reign with Christ right now how can you rightly say that you are saved if Jesus Christ is not reigning in your life how can you say oh he doesn't reign in my life but I'm saved well if he's not reigning in your life who saved you right but the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished this is the first resurrection now Jesus is that first resurrection he 
died he he laid down his life all right so he died and he rose back to life the resurrection the first resurrection and then he ascended to heaven with the promise that he would return for us so those of us that are born of the Spirit of God those of us that believe on the Lord Jesus Christ we are partakers of his resurrection blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection we are partakers of his resurrection on such the second death has no power Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? I, I'm taking a wild guess. I have no idea where this is at here. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me never shall never. I was off. Way off. Okay. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. The second death has no power over us right now. Okay, where am I at? The second death has no power over us right now, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. You shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. Speak this unto the children of Israel. Ye are a royal priesthood and holy nation. Right now, <laughs> it has made us kings and priests unto God and His Father. Right now. And they shall be priests of God and of Christ right now. And shall reign with Him right now. A thousand years right now until the end of the world. And when the thousand years are expired, it is the end of the world. Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. And shall go out and deceive the nations, which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, that should be a clue, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth, and compassed the camp of the saints about the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Alright, so first of all, let's, let's go... Uh, Let's do it this way here. Let's go to Matthew 24. All right. Try to make this easy to understand. So when Jesus comes, he's asked, What shall be the sign of thy coming and of, it, at the, of the end of the world? All right. So that's when he sends his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect. All right. So what happens at the great sound of the trumpet? Um... Let me see if I can remember this. Uh, let's see. For the Lord shall, himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. This is at the end of the world. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Okay, so at the end of the world, when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven then we are lifted up at the end of the world all right so when this happens when the thousand years expired we are lifted up in the air all right so let's go to first corinthians 15 real quick corinthians 15 and we read down here in a, in a moment in the twinkling of an eye I thought I might be wrong here. No, right there it is. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. Okay, so we are lifted up. We are changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. We are transformed into our glorified bodies when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. All right, so this is at the end of the thousand years. We're up in the air. All right, now think about this. We're up in the air with the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, what's it say in like Psalm 110, for example? We find, find many examples of this. And uh, 
It says, The Lord said unto my Lord, Set thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Right? Alright, and then uh, in Genesis 3, verse 15, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Okay, and so th this is all throughout the Bible, where we're lifted up in the air, and our enemy is gathered at our feet, and... Uh, and our enemy is gathered at our feet and um, Jesus stomps his foot on the head of the serpent destroying all evilness forever okay I can't tell if there's uh, people being slaughtered or maybe it's just kids having the time of their life I'm not sure I can hear stuff in the background alright so in Revel Revelation 3 it says, Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee, right, till I make thine enemies thy footstool, right, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel, right, till I make thine enemies thy footstool. So, we are up in the air, right, because just like what we read in Matthew 13, the harvest is the end of the world, and the wheat are gathered and stored in his barn, right? And then the terrors, which are the unbelievers, are put in bundles and burned. All right? And this is all throughout the Bible. And so when we're up in the air, Satan is now loose. Do you think you go back to before the baby Jesus, right? There was just one country and then outside of that one country of God were the countries of Satan which Satan de uh, was deceiving all these countries outside of Israel all right so and when Jesus comes he takes that all away from Satan bounds them and now when we are lifted up in the air now all the people on earth are unsaved so now Satan he's got the opportunity to once again deceive all the nations of the earth and so what's he do he gathers them all together to battle against the nation of God this time though we're up in the air all right and so when they're when they compass the camp of the Saints about the beloved city which is New Jerusalem which is above right so that means they're at our feet till I make thine enemies thy footstool and then what happens? Fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them all. All right, and so the devil and the beast and the false prophet and all that is destroyed. All wickedness, all evil is destroyed forever. All right, and so the great white throne is Jesus that is up in the air, and we are up in the air with him. All right, and the judgment of God is, are you saved or are you not saved? That's, it's that simple. All right, so if we are saved, then judgment has already been given to us. All right? So on and on and on and on and on. It's really simple. I mean, we could have figured all this out just by reading the first three books of Genesis. Really, that's what I think. But nevertheless, this is it's explained to us over and over and over and over and over and over all throughout the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation. It's the same thing. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it is the end of the world. And then, of course, one of my uh, favorite verses, uh, you know, is after all the evilness is destroyed all right there is no more tears no more death no more sorrow no more crying no more pain and he that sat upon the throne said behold I make all things 
new. So when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, we are lifted up. All evilness is destroyed below us. We are set back down on the earth. And all things are new. These words are true and faithful. Alright, so that's what we're putting our hope in. A deliverance from this wicked world. Just as Moses delivered his people out of the wickedness of Egypt, Jesus is going to deliver us out of the wickedness of this world wicked and cruel world.